may be seated. Lord, we know you've not made us for darkness. You've not made us 
or death, but instead you have made us for life and life with you forever. Lord, without you, we really have nothing to hope for, but with you, we have nothing to fear. You are what we need. And we praise you. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. I read the obituary of Leon H. Wiseman. Leon H. Wiseman, 93, beloved father, grandfather, and brother, went to be with his Lord and Savior Saturday, October 8, 2016. As you well know, Leon served the U.S. Army's famous 2nd Infantry Division, 23rd Regiment, in the Normandy invasion on D-Day. He also later fought in the Battle of Bulge and received the Bronze Star while serving in World War II. Leon worked for Southwestern Bell Telephone for 37 years before retiring. He was also a longtime member in Deacon and Victory Baptist Church and Old Mill Baptist Church. <coughs> Leon was preceded in death by his wife of 49 years, Mavis R. Wiseman, his second wife, Wilma Wiseman, his brother John Wiseman, his sister Janelle Tatarovich. He's also survived today by his son Ricky Wiseman, grandson Bill Bateman, and wife Tracy. Granddaughter Melanie Bear and her husband Pat. Great granddaughters Elizabeth Bateman and Samantha Mansfield. Great grandsons Evan Barrett and Sean Mansfield. Stepsons Greg Rosenau and Charles Rosenau. Brothers Roman Wiseman and wife Peggy and Billy Wiseman and wife Anne, as well as many other numerous relatives and family and friends that are here today. Uh, I'm going to share a brief word with you of something that stands out to me when I when I think about Leon, and uh, I had the joy and privilege of being his pastor just the last couple of years. Uh, not nearly as long to get to know him as well as some of y'all did. Some of you are definitely Brother Ewell. Uh, but there's two things that I was thinking and praying this week about what I might share with y'all this morning that might be a word of hope or encouragement. What comes to mind when I think of a man like Leon Wiseman? And there are two things, and it's uh, two ways that he blessed me as his pastor the time I got to know him. And there are two particular passages of scripture that he helped me understand better because by the way he lived, I saw it come to life. And this is what I mean. Though. The first one is this. Uh, Leon was a man of character who was well respected and held in high regard with anyone I've ever talked to that knew him. Proverbs 22 1 says it is better to have a good name and reputation than to be wealthy. It's far better to be held in high esteem than to have plenty of silver or gold. In my, my few years now, four or five years serving at Oak Knoll, I can honestly tell you I have not once heard anyone speak a negative word about Leon Wiseman. Matter of fact, it's the exact opposite. People couldn't wait to tell me how much they loved him, how much they respected him, how great he was, how great his faith was, how he was an incredible man, an incredible deacon, a man of character and faith and honor, and on and on it went. They were so excited to hear about it. They were so excited when he came, he was with us, and they were excited to, to make visits to go see him. It was easy to see that Leon was a man of great reputation, a man who was highly respected. And I think that not only speaks volumes about who he was, the man of character he was, but also leaves a legacy for the rest of us to follow. And there's one more passage I want to share with you, and that's 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, as you know, over the last couple of years, Leon's eyes continue to get worse and worse. And we would talk to him, we would go visit him, and he got off struggle with it. He was frustrated that he, he couldn't see it. And that reminded me of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, where the Apostle Paul reminds us that, that as Christians, we have this great hope and encouragement that no matter what circumstances we face in life, we can keep going. And Paul says in that passage, that's because Christians walk by faith, not just by sight. It's our faith, it's our, our trust in the Lord, who He is, what He's done in Jesus, what He's still doing, what He's still going to do. That trust is that God is what keeps leading us onward, keeps pushing us forward, even though everything else in our life might be falling apart. So there are often times in our lives as believers when everything we see tries to tell us that God is not up to something good. But it's our faith that says, no, even if I can't see it, I know that God is with me and life is going somewhere. Or in Leon's case, it wasn't so much what he saw, but what he could no longer see. But his faith remained strong and pure. So as much as Leon lamented losing his eyesight, he maintained the type of sight that matters most. And his faith that God is up to something amazing in Jesus that Leon gets to be a part of it because he belongs to Jesus. And that same faith has now led him to the fullness of sight and the fullness of life 
in the fullness of the presence of his Lord and Savior, Jesus. You may remember uh, the great hymn writer in the 19th century, 1850s, Fanny Crosby. She was uh, blind since childhood. She went on to write tons of hymns that we love today, but she once said this, you know, if I had a choice, I would still choose to remain blind, because then when I die, the first face I will ever see will be the face of my blessed Savior. So even though this morning we can mourn the loss of someone we love so dearly and looked up to so much, we can also be glad because we know where he is, and even more importantly, most importantly, we know who he's with and who he sees.
would seem like just a changed man. And he would tell stories and he would even write uh, stories. Uh, he, uh, he had one of his uh, young, uh, Mr. Smiley, I think that he's getting married today. But anyway, he wrote a three-page article about Leon and actually made an A in his class at school when he was in uh, either middle school or high school. But uh, if, I think he's here, but anyway, it, it depicts the life of Leon to the war situation. Um, one of the experiences that, that I always remember back, and you're going to see it in a little bit on a, a video of Leon. He would go around to churches and schools and uh, civic groups talking about the probably sometimes the horrors of war, but he would give his experiences of what he had to go through. Uh, and one of the things that he did while he was going through was to um, repeat a, a poem. And uh, he would always, up to just a year ago, he would always sometimes give the poem to various people. And I, he was at a nursing home at Parkwood. And uh, I went to see him one day, and his, his room was at the far end of the hall, and, and uh, I looked down there, and there was about probably a half dozen nurses and, and staff there out in the hall, and there was Leon and his walker, and he was repeating this poem to him. And he said, I need to practice so I can give it to him other people around the area here. But anyway, Leon was a, uh, a loving brother to me and to my other brother, Bill. And we just came to realize the impact that he made on us and made on many, many people that he was in contact with. Thank you for being here. Hey, amen. Thank you, Carmen. Leon was had uh, memorized a little poem called This Old Flag. And he quoted this poem in many places at schools, churches. I heard him, heard him quote it at the First Baptist Church of Eulis uh, some months ago. And, before three or four thousand people. But it's a, it's a good little poem that means a lot to all of us, but it meant a lot to, to Leon. And we've got a video we're going to play with him reciting that poem, This Old Flag. 